So it was a usual Sunday afternoon, and I was running errands, like I was just going to Target, and I went inside, I got all of my stuff, and then I came back up to my car, and as I was sitting there waiting to leave, I heard a loud crunch noise, and the tailgate of my car kind of lift up. So I was really confused, obviously, because I knew that I was just sitting stationary in my car and I didn't do anything. So I got out of my car to see what happened, and I noticed a little blue slug bug <laughs> pull back into a parking spot, and then an older man get out and start like yelling at me. And he was super furious, he didn't speak very good English, and he was yelling at me how I had to like pay all these damages to his car, and how it was like this vintage slug bug that they didn't provide parts for anymore and that it was all my fault and that I hit his car and everything. So obviously I was super confused and I was overwhelmed and I just didn't know what to do because I didn't understand like insurance policies and stuff like that. So I decided that it would be best just to swap insurances and then continue on with our days. But he refused to provide his insurance with me and only wanted mine. So we decided to just swap our phone numbers and then pictures of our IDs. So anyway, I went home that night thinking that everything was fine. It would just blow over since we never swapped our insurances. And I just screwed, like, I drilled my zip tie and drilled my bumper back onto my car before my dad saw, before anybody saw. And I thought it was just like everything would blow over. And then all of a sudden, the next day, I started getting calls from his personal phone number saying how much damage he had to his car, which obviously, it was like right by the license plate there was not much at all. It was just like a small dent because it was a small crunch in the parking lot. So I was super confused, and then I also started getting calls from his insurance company saying that I needed to start filing a claim and like telling the story of what happened. So I didn't want to do anything wrong or get into like any trouble like legally, so I finally told my insurance company and then my dad about it so that we could like file a claim and get everything organized like so that the insurance companies could handle it. So then I thought everything was fine, everything blown over, and then again two weeks later I got a phone call saying that um, it was basically all of my fault and I had to take 100% liability for it, so I was super infuriated that my car insurance went up a lot because I didn't do anything wrong, but since the driver of the car was older than me, had a clean record, and I was a minor, I guess I got blamed for it in the parking lot, so it was like because our stories didn't line up or something. So anyway, fast forward. Um, I was really mad about the situation, so I was explaining to my friends about what had happened, and I was sending them pictures of like the car accident, and I happened to send a picture of his license to one of my friends, and they were reading it, and she was talking about how he lived down the street from her, actually, um, on 26th Avenue. So he lives, it's like kind of exploiting him, but he lives in like a neighborhood that's right outside of, yeah, on Meadowbrook Drive, and she lives on 26th Street, which is like down the street from that there. So anyway, we thought that was kind of ironic, kind of funny, but we moved on. And then about a year later, I was going to pick up my friend on a Sunday again, and she was talking about how we were just gonna go to Starbucks, have a casual day. So I was driving down Mount Vernon Road here and I was taking a left on the 26th Street and I was almost at a full stop because oncoming traffic was coming so I had to like yield to oncoming traffic to take a left when all of a sudden I got rear-ended um, turning onto 26th Street. So as you can see here, it says 26th Street. I don't know if you can read that in the green, but since I got rear-ended, I got pushed up a little bit. So I wasn't able to turn onto 26th Street until my car was being towed. But I thought that was really ironic because it was right outside of his house, but since there was a really loud noise from the accident and obviously 911 had to be called and there were sirens, a lot of the neighbors had came outside to see what was going on to make sure both drivers were okay, including Edgar. So I did run into him a year after I got into a car accident with him, which was really embarrassing, really humiliating that he had to witness me get into another car accident. But the moral of the story is to drive safe and slow and to always stand up for yourself because I regret not taking that to court or just standing up for myself more about that.